Razvan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have back on the channel the haymaker himself, finally back from Costa Rica and everywhere else he's been in the world. David, how are we doing? I'm nice, I'm good. Relaxed, chilled, excited. I've been told I've got five minutes, so we're going to make this as quick as possible, oh, that's David. That's a quarter of one of my answers, isn't it? Fight week, it's upon us nearly. Dylan White, Tyson Fury, or Tyson Fury, Dylan White, how, however you want to call it. I think where I want to start is firstly, Dylan White's no-show, Dylan White's absence. He didn't show up to the press conference. He hasn't done any social media, any promotion, anything whatsoever. What is going through his mind? He's, what's going through his mind is, I want to win this fight. And by tweeting, by doing Instagram pictures, by getting on a private jet and flying to London, that's not going to increase his chances of victory when the first bell goes. What that's going to do is assist and help the promotion to make more money. His money is, is guaranteed. You know, he might get a bit of the upside, I'm not sure what the deal is, but in his mind, $8 million is enough to turn up and have a boxing match. So he's contra as far as I'm aware, he's contractually not obligated to do any of the other stuff that people are saying to do. So in his mind, it's like, OK, I need to train for this fight. I need to give myself the best opportunity and to do that. I need to train. So everything else is a distraction. I'm just going to give 100% to this and that's it. And I get it. I, I respect it because, you know, not many people would, would be ballsy enough to just go against the usual system that the, that, bring, that the whole boxing circus brings. But Dylan White's his own man. He makes his own decisions. And, you know, if he feels that he's going to turn up at the press conference before the fight, weigh in in the fight, that's all he's going to do, then you know, that's all he's going to do. I actually like it. It shows me that he's not in it for anything other than to win. I, I really like, I like the fact, I don't know, as if I was promoting him, I'd hate it. It'd be dry, pulling my hair out because there's a lot of money to, to, to rustle up, to, to generate from this event, to cover all of the wages that have been paid in, in purses. So, um, but I'm not, I'm looking from an outsider. And, you know, if I was looking at an opponent to give Tyson Fury the most amount of problems, it's someone who isn't interested in showing how great training is going or show, showing nothing. It's just train, eat, sleep, get in there and win. Do you think we'll see a face-off fight week? Yeah, we'll see a face-off for sure. He's got to get on the scales. He'll do all that. Once he's here, he's here. But, you know, he's in training now. He's not, in, he's not interested in doing face-offs. He's not interested in banter back and forth. It's all irrelevant stuff that doesn't affect him. So um, I, I get it. I understand why he's doing what he's doing. And I think it's kind of worked in his favour. It's rustled, it's, it's rustled, it's unsettled a lot of Team Fury that he wasn't there to, to see what happened. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's a different way of doing things. But, you know, I respect it. You've been on the podium with Tyson yourself. He's played mind games with everyone and yourself as well. And he's probably one of the, the hardest persons to kind of beat in that, in that particular field. Would that have benefited Dylan even more that Tyson would have just gone at him and, and made him not crumble, but made it difficult for him? I think, he's, I think the, way, the way to um, disarm someone who's great with a great, great talker and great, great with a banter in pre-fight hype is not being involved just disconnect from it, which he's done. So he's done probably the best thing because it seemed to have wound everybody else up. He's probably sitting at home laughing, you know, in his gym, chilling in Portugal, wherever he is. Doesn't phase him. So I think the psychological side of things, he's won up until this point. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when they both go face to face. You know, Dylan's a big imposing guy, but not as imposing as Tyson Fury. But, you know, apparently there's, uh, there's tales of them sparring together and Dylan doing really well in sparring, sparring matches. I know there's no, no one wins and losing there and you don't know what's happening. But psychologically, I definitely feel um, Dylan White with his style, with his history, you know, not only in boxing, and kickboxing as well. He's fought big guys in, in K1 and, you know, he's, he's a real physical specimen. You know, I sparred with him when he first... When we first turned professional, when Chris Oko was, was coaching him at the beginning. And even then, when he was a novice, he was very, very effective. Very, very long arms. Probably two or three inches longer than they should be. You know, my thing has been how to judge distance, and I couldn't judge his distance in the first minute of the first round of sparring with him. And in the heavyweight division, when you've got 10-ounce gloves on, you don't have, chart, you don't have time to readjust. Sometimes that, that error in distance and judgment is the difference between getting knocked down or knocked out. Fury obviously hasn't been in the ring for just over six months. Dylan White approaching, what, 13, 14 months now. Is that going to have a significant effect on the fight? Could do, could do. Um, the fact that Tyson Fury has been very regular in his, his, uh, his uh, training camps and his, uh, means he's, 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 he's come with momentum. You know, Dylan White, you know, I didn't realise it was that long, over a year. 
but you know he stays in shape. He, he looks after himself, and you know he's a consummate professional. So you know he's had big gaps in the past. So uh, I don't really think too much is going to make that much of a difference on on fight night. I just think they're both in both in their physical prime, physical peak, and um, this is the perfect fight for both of them to fight each other. You know, um, Tyson Fury's on a high. You know, Dylan White, you know, learned his lessons from the Povetkin fight and he's come back stronger. I see that similar, his loss to Povetkin, similar uh, the, way, the way Lennox Lewis lost to uh, Oliver McCall. You know, he just he got caught with a shot. It happens. You learn and you, you don't make, make sure it doesn't happen again. And, you know, he's going to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But Dylan's got to look out for that uppercut. You know, um, every time you know, Oscar Rivers, you know, uh, Parker... Um, whenever he's been hurt or AJ, it's with the uppercut. So as long as he understands, you know, one of uh, Tyson Fury's best weapons is his uppercut. He's, I'm sure him and his team know know that. But that's that's the danger for for Dylan White is uh, Tyson Fury's uh, sort of bowler uppercuts, as he's a very very good big man at fighting in close, particularly with the uppercuts. David, how do you prepare Dylan for someone like Tyson? We saw Chisora many years ago. He fought the, practically the whole fight sat, by being the sapple position, and he fights. When he fought Klitschko, almost on the back foot, to jab, jab, jab. He fought Deontay Wilder, came on the front foot and went to knock him out. How do you prepare your mindset and for someone like Fury, not knowing what he's going to present? Uh, you probably look at his last couple of fights. That usually, not always, particularly with Tyson Fury, because he can just change on the drop of a hat. He can be a southpaw. He might not have trained southpaw, but he could just turn southpaw. So he's so he is a very three-dimensional, three-dimensional fighter. So he's awkward to prep for. But, you know, I, I definitely feel having southpaw sparring partners, big, tall, strong guys, guys coming forward and guys moving away, inspiring. So if you just prepare yourself for any eventuality, and it's difficult to do that. There's only so many big six foot eight, six foot nine, six foot ten southpaw heavyweights that are good enough to, to hang with for Dylan White, even for a couple of rounds. So it's going to be, it's, it's, it's very tough to train for Tyson Fury, but I think... Dylan White is as good as he's ever going to be right now. This is his opportunity, and I think everyone's writing him off. Um, but I think that he's, he's one of those guys who will never say never, who just keeps coming. You know, he's shown it, proved it time and time again. Just look at his fights with um, Derek Chisora. You know, he was losing that fight, and he pulled one out of the bag. That's what he does. He finds a way to win. Whether he's winning or losing, he finds a way to win. And I think, I think this is going to be his, 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 his chance, and I think he's going to shock the world. David, uh, live and exclusive on BT Sport. Thank you so much for your time. And yeah, we'll catch you, I'm sure, during Fight Week. David Hay for yeah. IFL TV. Thank you very much. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.